And we can talk a little bit about that uh, and some costs. Uh, one of the other questions that comes up quite a bit is how much does it cost to charge the car? That really is a function of uh, how much you drive it, of course, and how much you pay for electricity. Here in Missouri, we had one of the last nuclear power plants to come online. And as a result, our elect electricity rates are extraordinarily low. Uh, we pay 7.2 cents a kilowatt hour in the summer, 5.2 in the winter. And at 7.2 cents, the higher value, if I drive the full 75 miles, it's about 75 cents. Uh, to charge the car. Um, that's a penny a mile. And it, almost an inconsequential expense when you think most people spend three or four hundred dollars a month on gasoline and would be down in the twenty twenty two dollars and fifty cents a month with electricity. Uh, you can see that there's, uh, there's some money to, to play with there in acquiring a car. The question that, that isn't a asked so much and should be is why isn't everybody driving electric cars and um, part of it is simply familiarity but part of it's historical a hundred years ago would you believe that most of the cars were electric electric drive uh, instead of petroleum and in fact our first cars uh, were driven by electricity i went back and took a look at the costs of operating those cars in 1906 and i found a remarkable thing uh, gasoline was uh, 20 cents a gallon in 1906. You could get some of, the, some of it for 15, but the, uh, they were kind of very variously graded. It wasn't simply regular and premium. There was a lot of quality differences in gasoline, and good quality gasoline was about 20 cents um, a gallon. And you could drive about 20 miles, uh, which is very similar to today. Our national fleet average uh, is 21 and a half miles per gallon right now. The uh, electricity was uh, remarkably similar. It was 20 cents a kilowatt hour. Unfortunately, you could only go about four miles on a kilowatt hour. And so you were looking at a dollar in electricity uh, to go the same distance uh, that you went uh, for 20 cents in gasoline. So gasoline had a huge um, advantage in cost in 1906. Things have changed. In 2007 dollars, that, uh, that 20 cents is $4.56. And gasoline has actually gone down in price since in the last 100 years um, to the point now where it's uh, uh, between $1.75 and $2 as we film this. Now it was $4 a gallon last uh, summer and it may get back there, but it's actually less cost than it was in 1906. Electricity is much less cost than it was in 1906. Again, that kilowatt hour uh, in 1906 would have been today's equivalent of $4.56. At $4.56, it would cost me $107 to charge this car, and I probably wouldn't have any interest in an electric car at all. But today, the national average cost for electricity across the country is 11 and 3 quarter cents per kilowatt hour, a tiny fraction. Uh, by several orders of magnitude from the cost of it in 1906 and much more widely available. Electricity was available some places and not others in 1906. Today every home has, is part of a distribution system that stretches across the land and everyone has uh, access to electricity. Um, you may have to make a few changes in your garage wiring to accommodate higher current levels and uh, uh, 240 volt service. They're relatively trivial. A couple hundred dollars uh, for a licensed electrician uh, to run you a, a 30 amp uh, 240 volt circuit to any place in the garage you want it. Um, and so things have changed a great deal in the last hundred years to the point now that it's, it's pennies to drive an electric car and, um, and frankly a pain uh, to deal with the gasoline and uh, um, petroleum uh, products. Another advantage of the electric car is it's simply a simpler and more elegant device. We get rid of a lot of the systems that come with an internal combustion engine such as the cooling system and the radiator and the antifreeze and the water pump and the, um, the belt that drives the water pump. Um, 
we get rid of the uh, fuel system with the uh, fuel tank and the fuel pump and the fuel filter uh, and the injectors um, or the carburetor. Uh, uh, we don't have the same issues uh, with exhaust, um, so we don't have an, a, an exhaust system, um, a platinum containing catalytic converter, um, a smog check to see how much we're putting out. It, it's simply not in the car, and the weight of it, and the expense of it, and the complication of it is similarly missing. So you wind up with a much simpler system. You have a battery system. You have a controller that applies uh, the power to the uh, motor and, uh, in response to your input on the accelerator. Um, you usually have a, a little auxiliary 12-volt uh, system that works off your main pack to convert that down to 12-volt to run all the things that you run anyway, the headlights and the taillights and the, the air conditioner and so forth. So. The, um, it's a much simpler car and it's a much cleaner car. And by cleaner, I, you know, environmentally, of course, it's a lot cleaner. It's cleaner on your hands. You're not getting the oil and the grease and the brake fluid and the, all, all the stuff with the dust and the road dirt that clings to all that doesn't happen in your car. Uh, you can work on your car and your hands are relatively clean. Uh, you, you don't have that uh, uh, grime and the mountain of consumables that you have to, to purchase each year to maintain an internal combustion engine car. It's simply not part of an electric car um, any more than it would be uh, for a golf cart. Your brakes and tires are the same uh, basic issues. Um, uh, we've converted this car to all LED lights and uh, high intensity discharge xenon, so I, I don't really expect to have to change a light bulb for the life of the car. In addition, they use less current and have less effect on uh, the range of the car in, in that manner. So the bottom line is life of an electric car is pretty good and you're pretty much in control. And it all comes from your ability to plug in the plug. So now that you've seen a little bit about the technology in the car, the real proof is in the driving of it. So come on, let's go take a drive in the electric Porsche uh, Beck 356 Speedster um, baby on board. Starting an electric car offers somewhat less drama than a uh, internal combustion engine vehicle. Uh, when I was a kid, you'd turn the key and pray you had enough battery to start the engine. In an electric car, you always have enough battery but there's not a lot of drama even then. You turn the key and we're running. It started. Uh, I know that because I've got a light lit here and that tells me that uh, our contactors have closed. We've got power to the controller and we're ready to apply it to the motor. I've got a little bit of electro electronic instrumentation here with our uh, E-Vision um, instrumentation system from Metric Mind. Uh, this gives me my uh, voltage current, uh, the voltage of my 12 volt auxiliary system, how many watt hours per mile, um, how many amp hours per mile, uh, and a little bit of a battery uh, uh, fuel gauge indication. It's actually got 21 pages of information I can change with this little knob between the seats. Um, and that just changes what these two digital displays, numeric displays in this bar graph uh, tell me. Our speedometer uh, works as normal. That always uh, came off a geared uh, uh, detector on a wheel. Our tachometer um, is actually tied to a magnetic pickup on the rear shaft of our electric motor. As it turns out, the uh, net game Wart Mot 9 has a 5,500 RPM uh, limitation, which is precisely the same that our CB Performance uh, um, VW engine that we took out of the car had. So we got lucky there. Um, so our tachometer works as normal. 